honestly I had always really liked writing when I was like a kid so when I was 10 I would like write different endings to Scooby-Doo stories so <laughs> writing fan fiction before like I knew what fan fiction was um, and then in high school I decided I wanted to actually start seriously pursuing writing so I wrote a book for National Novel Writing Month and then tried to get an agent with it and because I was 15 and like it it was an okay book but it like it didn't work out um, and then, but then after that, I was like, oh, I really like this. I kind of want to pursue this as my, as my career. So probably high school and beyond. My first book is called Who I Was With Her. It came out from HarperCollins um, about a month ago on September 15th. It is about a teenage girl whose secret girlfriend dies and no one knows they were together because um, the main character, Corinne, wasn't ready to come out as bisexual. So a lot of the book is her dealing with that grief of having lost her girlfriend and the only person that she can turn to is her girlfriend's ex, Alyssa. So they start to kind of have a connection as well. And the book is done in dual timelines. So it flashes back and forth between um, Corinne dealing with grieving over Maggie's death and then showing Maggie and Corinne's actual relationship before Maggie died. <laughs> Fun answer. I'm actually, I am drafting something right now. Um, I, my work schedule is a little bit weird because I do work retail as my day job. So I don't know that schedule varies from week to week. So I tend to write in the morning uh, when I have time, if like before I go into work, um, I usually take off Mondays and Tuesdays so I can just have those days to write and focus on writing. And then beyond those particular days, kind of whenever I can find the time to write in between working. So like if I'm on my break at work, maybe I'll like type something like a couple notes on my phone or if I'm only working like a short shift, I'll still have like energy to write either before or after that kind of it really does vary day by day, um, especially now with COVID and everything being so like up in the air. Um, for me, it's kind of been important to find a sort of schedule and stick to that. So usually, I think usually I try to write in the mornings probably for about 30 minutes to an hour, sometimes longer if I'm like really getting into it. For me in particular, I think that what I'm always looking for in story is characters first, first and foremost. So like your plot could be the most like interesting, exciting thing in the world, but if I don't care about the characters, I don't really care about the plot. So, because I, I I read it kind of across genres, so I'll read whatever genre, but as long as like the characters and their stories and their particular struggles are interesting to me, then that's what's going to make a really good story for me. Because if you've got a really good character, then you've got, you know, you've got the stakes are there. You've got that tension already because you care about what's going to happen to the character. You care about what they want. You care about the things that are, standing in their way, what's trying to get them from getting what they want. And to me, regardless of genre, that makes for that can make for a really interesting story. I just started reading um, the invisible the invisible life of Addie LaRue. I think it's V. E. Schwab's newest book. It just came out Tuesday, but it's a fantasy novel, kind of like time travel fantasy, about a girl who made like a bargain with the devil to live forever and like be whoever she wanted but the consequences everyone forgets her within like minutes of meeting her and it is so good so far and so sad and so intriguing and i'm really enjoying reading that and then the author of hyperbole and a half the which is the fun little comics ali bro she just her new book just came out and i was like oh heck yeah so i've been reading those as well i definitely think that's important especially being from north carolina myself because for me when I was growing up I was like I didn't really know of any authors who were from North Carolina or who lived in North Carolina like I knew I mean I, I was a teenager in like the early like the, the 2000s and stuff so I knew Sarah Dessen because you couldn't be a teenage girl in the 2000s and not know who Sarah Dessen was if you lived in North Carolina but beyond that I was like and like Nicholas Sparks those are the only two authors I knew who were North Carolina based authors and I didn't realize until much later like oh no, there's a ton of authors here. There's like a great literary scene here. And for me, even back then, knowing that those two authors lived here, I was like, okay, wow, they're from North Carolina. They live in North Carolina. This is something I can totally do as well. So I am so glad we have that map to show that, hey, we have some great authors from North Carolina and who live in North Carolina. And like, they're from all over the state and we have so many. So I think it's fantastic.